Recently, the Democratic National Committee held a hearing to decide whether or not they should have a um, a debate, so sort of like a specific Democratic debate that focuses on climate change. And obviously, as many people know, the Democratic Party, or the Democratic Committee and Party in general, is extremely corrupt and extremely um, beholden to corporate interests. So obviously, this is not in their best best interest to do these kind of things. And they actually ended up voting it down when they made when they had this vote. They actually voted down the idea of doing a climate change debate. And um, so let me read this article for you guys here, and it kind of gets into the details of exactly what happened and everything. And we will discuss it as we read along. Um, let's see. So the title of the article is Democratic National Committee Votes Down Climate Debate Activists Vow to Fight On. It says the vote a day came a, a day came, came a day after the 2020 climate candidate Jay Inslee, who had been pushing for the debate, dropped out of the race. Yeah, Jay Inslee was a, is a, was because he's not in the obviously dropped out, so he's not around anymore in the primary. But he was a very good um, candidate to have around because he was pushing obviously great great policies that the Democratic Party should focus on much more. Um, so let's check out the article here. Okay, so the body of the article starts off by saying a panel of the Democratic National Committee on Thursday rejected a proposal, and by the way, this is from HuffPost.com, and it's, it said they rejected a proposal to host a single-issue debate on the climate crisis. At a party conference Thursday in San Francisco, California, the DNC's Resolutions Committee voted 17-8, wow, against a resolution that has become a cause celebre, I'm not sure exactly how to say the word, celebre, celebre, for activists and for more than a dozen presidential contenders who felt the traditional debate format failed to adequately address the looming threat of catastrophe. The issue could resurface during the full committee's general session on Saturday. It was a predictable outcome. Top brass of the DNC opposed the climate debate from the get-go, fearing it could sow discord in the base and hamper the eventual nominee in the general election. I'm sp I wouldn't be surprised if they're claiming that Russian bots are pushing for that stuff. So-called Russian bots. They probably will at some point. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, it says CNN and MSNBC announced plans last month to host forums on climate change in September. DNC Chair um, Tom Perez affirmed the forums in a resolution introduced earlier this month, which some activists saw as setting the stage for voting down the climate debate. Simone Sanders, a senior advisor of presidential candidate Joe Biden, was among those who urged the DNC on Thursday to vote down a climate debate, saying it would quote, danger, it would be, quote, a dangerous territory in the middle of a democratic primary, democratic primary process. Um, so before I continue, I just want to play you guys the clip. She has a clip where he, she, you know, comments on why they shouldn't, on why they shouldn't, um, you know, they shouldn't have the debate, essentially. Um, this was during, so it was during the, whatever, conference or during the thing the kind of the debate they were having so it's about a minute and a half video so check this out and then we'll di we'll discuss it or we'll probably continue the article and then discuss the all the stuff at the end of the at the end there were a number of forums hosted Planned Parenthood hosted a forum where 20 candidates showed up uh, there was a forum specifically about black women um, a number of candidates showed up uh, there is a forum that Latino Victory Fund is hosting in the, in the coming weeks and months, I believe, uh, where a number of candidates are slated to show up with the slam of Puerto Rico. Um, so I, I just, I, I, we are fundamentally, this, this resolution right now, would fundamentally change the game in terms of uh, what has previously been communicated to not only campaigns, but networks, but other, as I like to call them, factions of the Democratic Party. And I fundamentally believe that climate change is an existential threat. Um, just as much of a threat now, more of a threat than Donald Trump. Uh, but I do think we have to think about the other folks that, that communicated they wanted a debate, that were told a debate is two or more people, and so you may not have a debate, but you can in fact have a forum. And we support forums, but I just, I think this is dangerous territory in the middle of a Democratic primary. 
primary process. And if we do, I mean, I absolutely support um, Christine's point about perhaps we should chop up our pla platform, our debate should be theme focused. But frankly, that is a conversation we should have had last summer. That's not a feasible conversation to have this summer as we are nearly three fourths, th one third of the way through a Democratic primary process. So that's just a part of her speech. Um, I'm guessing it's at least another two or three minutes longer because um, I believe each speaker that speaks at these um, speaks at these um, committee forums and stuff, they get a, kind of like an allotted amount of time, maybe four or five minutes or something to speak. And um, but she's basically her her argument basically boils down to Simone Sanders, by the way, is a senior advisor to Joe Biden. She was an advisor to Bernie Sanders in 2016, by the way, which is interesting. A lot of people believe that she was um, placed in there as a mole so as to, like, get information from, you know, from Bernie and about Bernie and then go to another campaign in 2020 or something and then or another campaign and just use it against him essentially use information against him um but she basically her argument is is that well if we're going to have a, a specific form or debate regarding climate change we should have a specific form or debate regarding all other issues too so like black issues so like you know criminal justice issues um uh, women's issues and stuff so she, I mean, it's a clever cop-out. I mean, I think a lot of people are probably going to fall for that and be like, yeah, no, totally. I totally agree with that because whatever, because, you know, she's, I guess in some, in some, some people's minds, she's probably making sense because she's basically saying that if we're going to address this issue, then we should do it with everything else. But that's just a way for her to avoid her candidate. So Joe Biden, from her candidate to be able to have to talk about climate change because his climate change plan sucks and like i said bernie sanders has the best plan um everybody else's plan is way below and horrible way below his and just horrible and just not that good um and she knows that his plan is not that good and or she just knows that if you know he's forced to speak on it more that it's going to cause it's going to sow division in the party so she's pushing this for the same kind of shit the rest of the dnc or the you know kind of the party the party higher ups are pushing because she's not a party higher up obviously but she's obviously a member of the party she must have some sort of board committee you know you know kind of role or something so um but she just wants to avoid Biden from talking about that kind of stuff because she knows that if he talks about it, it's not going to help his poll numbers because nobody is going to like his plan. And, you know, the less he talks, the better, which is not that surprising because they've been trying to do that with Biden for a while now. They don't want him talking very much. They don't want him making a lot of appearances and shit. So, um, so let's see here. Um, so after, so after the article addresses Simone Sanders' um, statement on the issue, it says, um, the, the article for Huffington Post says, that contrasts with what Biden had earlier said during a campaign stop in Iowa this summer. The former vice president had endorsed having a climate debate telling Greenpeace, I'm all in. The influential, the influential youth-led uh, climate group Sunrise Movement, a driving force behind the climate debate push, filled the room where the vote took place with as many as 100 activists on Thursday. We deserve a chance at a livable future, said one said one Sunrise activist shout, who shouted after the vote. We deserve a climate debate. The nonprofit vowed to hold protests over the next day, intended to shame the DNC for voting down the measure at the same time. It applauded the committee's vote to advance a resolution reversing a ban on 2020 candidates participating alongside one another at climate forums not sanctioned by the DNC. By the way, the Sunrise Movement is a group that so obviously they, they support... Um, you know, more action taken on climate change, but they're also a group that has gone to many, many political, you know, politicians' offices and protested outside of their offices. In, pa in fact, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez protested with them right after the day or day or two after she got elected by, you know, you know, in her election, beating Joe Crowley, she went and protested outside Nancy Pelosi's office with the Sunrise Movement and a bunch of, I think, other protesters as well, but mainly the Sunrise Movement. And the Sunrise Movement has also gone to the offices of Dianne Feinstein and I think one other one too. And they've also obviously met with Bernie Sanders because he's a big climate change, you know, 
you know, climate change advocate or, you know, doing something about climate change. So they're definitely a big supporter of his, but they're trying to get everybody else that they feel that they can get on board to, you know, get on board with the idea. And um, they've been attacked for that because they've said, you know, the, the people that are criticizing are like, well, why don't you go after Republicans more? And they're like, yeah, but the Republicans already don't support climate change compared to somebody like Dianne Feinstein or Nancy Pelosi, who's doing very little to nothing on the issue and just, you know, kind of grandstands and pretends to issue, to address it and doesn't really address it. They just, it's just a lot of talk, basically. So, um, the next part here says, this partial victory shows the strength of the grassroots movement and the power of young people. Of young people. So I guess they're, I'm assuming they are referring to the forums that are going to be taking place. Um, it, says at the same time. it says, oh, it says, yeah. So it says the Sunrise Movement applauded the committee's vote to advance a resolution reversing a ban on 2020 candidates participating alongside one another at climate forums, not sanctioned. So not sanctioned by the DNC. So that's that was the last set, the, the last or a paragraph there. <clears throat> it says, This partial victory shows the strength of the grassroots movement and the power of young people. Sunrise Movement spokesman Sophie Karasik said in a statement, In the coming days and months, we'll keep fighting to make sure the DNC and Tom Perez treat the climate crisis like the emergency that it is and give it the airtime and attention that it deserves. Yeah, so the uh, the article goes on along here. It just talks about Jay Inslee a little bit, and um, yeah, uh, mentions Nancy Pelosi. Uh, yeah, it actually mentions. Yeah, it says how the youth act, so the youth activists from the Sunrise Movement um, went to Nancy Pelosi's office and protested. That was the one that AOC went to as well. Um, and then, yeah, it mentions Inslee a little bit more. It mentions Tom Perez, who's the head of the DNC. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to check out that article, I'll put it in the description box. But yeah, man, I mean, this, it's just, I don't agree with the whole concession that like, because, you know, the Sunrise Sunrise Movement spokesperson saying that it's like a concession that they're allowing, you know, the committee, the committee's vote to advance a resolution reversing a ban on 2020 candidates participating. But the fact that they don't want to have a whole debate about climate change is amazing. Like, they, the DNC doesn't want to do anything. Again, they don't want to do anything that doesn't, that, that I'm sorry, that gets in the way of, you know, pissing off their donors and pissing off the people that are bankrolling their causes. And they fear that if that happens, then it could end up, um, it could end up um, putting into question the amount of money they get from donors. So they want to prevent that. And they don't want that to happen. And if they have to go out there and make these asinine arguments like Simone Sanders does and say like, oh, well, if you're going to have a debate on this, then you got to have a debate on that. And you got to de have a debate on everything else and blah, blah. Like, okay, I guess you can make that argument in some regard and, you know, get away with it. But at the same time, it's like, like, at least, at least try and seem like you're, at least your candidate is serious about it, you know? Like, look at Bernie Sanders. He puts a whole, he puts out a whole fucking detailed, long-ass plan about climate change, which I couldn't even barely, I couldn't even get through the entire thing on the, on the show because it's so freaking long, but that's, that's good, and this is something he obviously talks about all the time, and, you know, what is Biden? Is Biden doing anything like that? No, he's not. He's talking about everything in vagaries and surface-level shit and just, like, getting into, like, very, like, platitude-type, conver you know, conversations and, and speeches and, descri you know, descriptions of his plan or, whatever plan he has or doesn't have, whatever it is, he's not getting into detail about it, though. He's trying his best to just kind of brush over it, not, you know, not address it too much because he knows that if he does, then he's not, you know, he's going to piss off the donors, the people, the people that are doing fundraisers for him and shit. As, as, as with every centrist Democrat, every establishment Democrat, Joe Biden knows where his bread is buttered. He knows that he has to he has to adhere to the demands of people that are going to be filling his coffers and giving him funding to maintain, to, to keep his, obviously his campaign, you know, obviously going under, under 
which <laughs> I think a lot of people can make. A lot of people have made the argument that it already is going under just from his gaffes alone because he's had so many freaking gaffes and just, you know, even his own wife saying stupid things. And it's, you know, he knows he knows that he can't go into detail on that stuff because it's not going to, he's not going to have a very good, you know, explanation for why we should um, address climate change. Everything is going to just be like very vague type, platitude type, cliche shit. And if not that, he just knows that, you know, obviously if he gets too progressive, he's going to piss off the donors. So that all that, that all that vague shit is because of the donors that make him do those kind of things. So the donors force him, tell him to, to, to address the, the issues like that. So, I mean, they don't, obviously they don't want him to get into, 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 into any kind of detail because then they can't fund him and he's already losing a lot of the people that are bankrolling him as it is. So he's probably paranoid as it is, you know, about, you know, at this moment. And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want that to get any worse, you know, any worse than it already is getting. So as usual, Joe Biden, you know, the DNC, the establishment, the corporate establishment, the centrists, they're all getting together to make sure to stop having conversations, de you know, detailed conversations about issues that are going, that are affecting us now, that are going to affect us even more. And I mean, like I said, I covered Bernie Sanders' plan. His plan is super specific, getting to the, to the, into the meat of, of what we need to do on climate change. And he is focused on making that, you know, work as soon as possible. And... He knows if he doesn't, it's going to get even worse. And, you know, we might not even have a world to live on anymore. You know, our, 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 our atmosphere is going to burn up to the point that we're just not going to, we're not going to be able to exist much longer. So, luckily, Bernie is addressing these things. Joe Biden is not. His advisors don't give a shit. His, his um, you know, his donors don't give a shit. Bernie Sanders is honestly the only one, and Jay Inslee, to his credit, Jay Inslee was when he, you know, before he dropped out, he was addressing it big time. And that's, you know, I'm very happy to see Inslee do that. He was a, he was, I believe, governor of Washington State up north. And he's, you know, he's always, I've always known him to be somebody that's focusing on climate change very, very extensively. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if Bernie Sanders put Jay Inslee on his, potentially maybe his cabinet or, you know, spoke to him and, and kind of, you know, got, even got endorsed by him. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I'm talking about before the general, obviously, because I think it's obvious most <laughs> most Democrats are going to be endorsing, um, you know, whoever the nominee is. Hopefully it's Bernie. So, but yeah, Bernie definitely has the best plan. Biden doesn't obviously have the best plan. His spokespeople are fucking idiots and they don't know what they're doing and the Democratic Party and the Democratic National Party is clearly in on, on that on that scam of lying to the rest of us and pretending they're going to address something when they're clearly not.